Hello, everybody, and welcome back to more Enter the Gungeon. T taking a small one weekish break from Lich Streaks. We are still on a streak of 300, but we're not going to be doing that today. Today, I kind of just, you know what? I feel like playing Paradox, and I feel like going to do the Hero Shrine. Just do a couple things, just like slightly different. I want to play this character, and then uh, I kind of want to play Curse Run, so that's what we're going to do. But before we get into this, I do have an announcement type thing to make. Hold on, I've tapped out. All right. Announcement type thing to make, and that is that I have made a new second channel that will contain all of my Twitch VODs, because I do stream every Monday and Wednesday at 4 p.m. Central on twitch.tv slash Retromation. If you're brand new here and you, this is your first introduction to me, I'm sorry that it's an ad, but <laughs> it's true. I stream every Monday and Wednesday at 4 p.m. Central and sometimes more. But if you cannot make those, I do have a second channel that I made. I will put the link in the description. But if I forget to, it is called Rito Does Games, R-E-T-O Does Games. And it will contain all of the VODs. So I truly, all oh, flack bullets to start, truly hope you uh, are going to pop on over and get in on that. Because... It's where I, it's, you know, it's, I've got, like, what, uh, by the time this one goes up, there'll be all kinds of stuff already, already over there, like, the Dicey Dungeons VOD, uh, let's see, Dicey Dungeons, Super Animal Royale, a couple World of Warcraft ones, and my reactions to the Nintendo Direct are all gonna be over there, uh, all featuring complete webcam, if, uh, anybody cares about that. Rito, do a face reveal! I already have done it, like, 200 times, go check out the Twitch. Just don't do it on, I just don't do it on YouTube. I do it on the live stream because it makes a lot of sense to do it on a live stream compared to, uh, I didn't even do the Hero Shrine. I'll do it, like, right now. I got distracted by my own ad. Logically, it makes the most sense to do the Hero Shrine after you do the whole first floor, but that's, like, wasn't the point today. Logically, you do want to do the entire first floor, then do it if you are, like, just... I want to beat the run and hit the hero shrine, you know? If that's your goal, you can really just do that. It, it's really not too too big of a deal then. Although the first floor is not really that big of an issue in even with the, the curse mode and everything. Um, just not a big deal. You kind of want to have it on because then you get a lot of extra money. Get yourself set up so you can likely do a uh, holy moly can likely do the, uh, the the rat and everything like that. You get enough money to do all that kind of stuff. I, I saw that come from a mile away, and I also don't really mind. Whoop. Whoop. Look at all that money. See, you would not get that much money if you weren't doing the, the uh, hero shrine. But yeah, anyways, I'll, I'll wrap up my thought on that other thing. Uh, so the major things, just uh, if you, for some reason, aren't following me on Twitch, please, uh, please consider doing so. I really love doing it. I'll probably uh, get back to streaming some Gungeon very shortly, but I've been... Been doing uh, some, some forays into some other little wild stuff as well. And, you know, been playing Super Animal Royale with with people who are watching. Uh, did a little of the Dicey Dungeon. That was closer to the the launch of it. Whoa. And uh, I've been having a lot of fun doing some, like, World of Warcraft classic relaxing kind of streams as well. I don't know how, much, how many more of those I'm going to do. But uh, I'll definitely get back to streaming some Gungeon and things. So do follow over on twitch.tv slash Retromation and check out the streams. And if you cannot make them, they're all going to be in a convenient, lovely playlist place over there. That is plenty of advertising. I'm done with it now. Let's talk about Flak Bullets. Flak Bullets are great. <laughs> Segways are weird. Uh, Flak Bullets are great. Because they are just... Uh, it's just free, free damage. It's kind of like Angry Bullets, but more reliably handy Mo the, my favorite part about them though is just that they're cool i'll be honest like i'm i'm a sucker i'm a sucker my favorite part about them is that they make things like explode effectively like it makes your bullets turn into more bullets it'd be even more wild if oh they kept the uh the properties of the bullet that'd be even more insane we do have to n keep in mind that we're doing the uh Curse Shrine today, hopefully that plane, that super loud plane is not uh, incredibly annoying. Whoop. But we're going to be getting a lot of uh, a lot of Mimics. We're at 9 Curse right now. That means it's going to be Mimic Central. Hopefully this sucker gives me a gun. Thank you. Not even a great one, but it's... Honestly, it doesn't even matter. Doesn't even matter. Could be a Mimic. Alright. Not found the shop yet. 
We're definitely gonna get ourselves a key, right? Definitely. Shaka Cola, I love Shaka Cola. Get both of them. I love Shaka Cola. It's just a nice little, it's a nice little freebie. Uh, I will check and see what our other chest is. We already did. We already did. So our chest, this was a, um, this, this was a gun. So this is a passive. Uh, I'll still go for this. I'm happy I did. Demon Head is good. Demon Head's good. I sleep on it. It's not like, it never comes up in the, in the guns of the year. Gun of, gun of the year, uh, final awards at the end of the season. But it, maybe it should, you know, is the thing. It's like, it's probably better than some of the ones that do. Look at it go. Look at it do its thing. It's like, as far as beam weapons go, it's kind of in a beam weapon masterclass, if you ask me. If you ask me, we are going to be out of here. We did get a key. Do we want it? Sure. Wait, 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 what? Am I insane or did we get two guns? We blew this up, didn't we? It blew itself up. It blew itself up. That's okay. We didn't know. All right. All right. All right. I was wrong. I was wrong. Let me get my uh, questions up. I actually have not. I forgot to answer some in the last episode. I'm pretty sure. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Professional man. All right. We. There we go. Got him already. Boop. Boop. I'll get him ready for later. All right. That's enough dilly dallying. But anywho. Oh! Son of a gun! Son of a gun. I love, love that room. Any rooms that have just pits as a, like a right away thing. There's, there's like two of them. There's like two of them and they're both trap rooms. And they're just, they're rare enough where uh, you're going to get caught by it, you know? Because most rooms are not that way, and I'm not going to train my brain to think like, what if this is the one of the uh, two out of the 3,000 possible rooms? That's not 3,000 possible rooms. But you know what I'm saying. What if this is one of the two? I'm not going to live my life that paranoid in my Enter the Gungeon. I'm not going to live my Enter the Gungeon life that paranoid like that. No way siree. Anywho. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't want to go all pluggy, pluggy like crazy today. But I just like. I gotta say, I just got finished re recording an uh, episode of Children of Morta, and I am so in love with that game, guys. Like, if if I could ask you to give any other series on the channel a chance, also if I could convince you to, uh, or uh, not convince, um, if I could recommend any on, on the channel based off of Enter the Gungeon, I'd say Children of Morta because it, it's really interesting. I. I mean, we're, I know we're not talking about Gungeon already, but still, it's uh, it's really it's it's been a lot of fun to play that game. It's kind of like a weird mix uh, of of uh, like Diablo 2 and like Enter the Gungeon, kind of like twin stick shootery kind of thing, where it's kind of like RPG. And here's the thing that I wanted to talk about that I thought was really interesting. I, I bring it I bring up Children of Morta because I think it could segue into an interesting talking point, and that's the fact that uh, how. How can a, a roguelike have a meaningful story? Because Children of Morta does. And it's it's very, very interesting um, to see how how they tackle it. Because inherently, like, a roguelike has an issue with just with story. Just immediately, it has to tackle the problem of, all right, first of all, how do we tackle the fact that, like, your character dies a lot? You know, like you, there's there's a lot of cop outs you can take. In Children of Morta, they they have recurring characters, so like you're not playing. It's n and it's not just and you you do in Gungeon too, and there is a story in Gungeon. But I feel like roguelikes are are not ones to to put the story front and center. They don't want to put like character development in there. They don't want to put anything. Because it's just like, it, you know, it's usually not what anyone's looking for when they're looking for a roguelike. But then I, like, I started playing Children of Morta and I'm like, Game, these roguelikes could be trying things like this. Because what, what they do that's one thing that's kind of interesting is there's a hub world, the hub world. Think the, the breach in Enter the Gungeon. 
Ooh. The breach and enter the dungeon. All the characters stay there, and they have dialogue in between each each run, effectively. Like, basically, each run you go to a, a new zone, uh, and you keep at it, keep at it, keep at it until you you beat the boss of that zone. Uh, but then you come back, win or lose, everybody has different dialogue. Um, the characters don't actually die; they just like you know they have like a little soul stone type thing. Where they go, if they die, you just you won't be able to use them for a little bit so they can rest or something. Um, but they all have something to say about what just happened. They have like little character building things. Like there can be a random event. And this is how what I think it does really interestingly. I think it could um, you could combine procedural storytelling elements to make character development in a weird way. Like there was this one thing, sm small spoilers to my series, but it's really like it's, it's extremely small. Like, there's a special event that happens where you have to escort a child back to his his mother. And he, like, he leaves the room, he starts going, he escorts, and he can, you can, you can lose him. He could die. And if he does, in that random little event that just, you know, it's, it's like a, in a lot of other games, it's just a throwaway event. But in Children of Morta, he dies. You go back to your, your hub world. If you failed that... It's effectively just a side quest. If you fail that, uh, the characters will talk about how they feel they feel immense guilt that they weren't able to complete that side quest, that little thing. And that's really, I think that's just very, very neat. And it, I've never been, uh, I've never been able to be into a, really a story on a roguelike. But like I played 1,050 hours of Gungeon now. I, I s still haven't really looked into the story. <laughs> And that's wild, you know? Like, you'd think I would know the story just secondhand by now. But a lot of roguelikes just don't want any part of it. And that, and I can understand it. Just simply maybe it would feel shoehorned or something. But truly, truly, I recommend checking out my Children of Morta series. You can see what I'm sort of talking about there. It just It does a lot of really neat things while scratching, like, the kind of Diablo itch that I... That I've been having, I just had, like, my series are, main series on my channel, I knew that was going to happen, I just, that's kind of just a nasty little situation. My main series used to be, like, now you'd think it's Gungeon, I mean, even, even now, like, all the videos on my channel are getting kind of spread out on their views, but it used to be that Diablo was my, my series, major series, that was the one that did well, back when, like, Reaper of Souls came out for it. That used to be my big boy series, you know? That used to be the one that people would be like, when's more When's more of that coming out? Or like, all, I think it was, something happened, and I don't know why, but when you search Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls, I was like one of the top searches for a while. And so I, like, I, I love I loved Diablo 3 post, post updates. Post updates, I think it's a really good game. Uh, and But I, I don't know, I just haven't felt like, you know, Blizzard hasn't been caring about it, so I didn't feel like going back to it, because, you know, if they don't care about it, why should I kind of thing? But Children of Morta kind of scratches that itch. It feels like if they took, um, I mean, apologies for still talking about another game, but it's kind of like, this is the Rito Does Games podcast, let's be honest. Uh, th that's what the Gungeon series has sort of become. Oop. And it's more just talking about uh, genre and everything at this point. Like, I, I feel like it's what they would take, if they were taking um, the aspects of games like Diablo 2, action RPGs like that, and instead of, like, there's two paths you can go. There's the path of taking what's there and making it, um, making it modern in, like, in its, in what, like, the people would have wanted out of it. And that's, like, the Path of the Exile route. And I, you know, I like Path of Exile quite a bit. I, I've never gotten deeply, deeply into it because it's really, really daunting. But I, I really liked what I played. And then there's, like, what if we wanted to take the, some aspects of this and strip them down and make like a self-contained little... Okay, that makes a lot of sense that that happened. Self-contained little narrative and really, uh, I don't know, put put more more meaning on the moment to moment. And that's what it feels like Children of Morda is. And I've been having, having a lot of fun with that. Boy, oh boy. This run is not that strong yet. It's not that bad either. We got broccoli. 
Got broccoli. I'll just let's uh, par pardon me for taking a moment to talk about Enter the Gungeon for a second here, but yeah, we just checking in on the run. We got we got some nice little passives, but I think that I don't know. May maybe it is actually going pretty well, and it's just hard to feel it because the enemies do have the three hundred percent health up. I think that's probably more likely the story here. All in all, it's going just fine. Going just fine. I think I'm being being too hard on it. We didn't go for the rat key. I don't know. We went for the rat key in the last episode in the double challenge mode episode. But that's not that's not why I didn't do it. I, I just I didn't feel like it. Didn't feel like it right now. But anywho, you know what? We're we're probably wrapping up on the um the weird kind of bonus quirky type episodes for the week here. Uh we'll be rounding it up. Rounding it off probably truly with the um whatchamacallit? With the, the final rainbow run not final. The the next rainbow run day Sunday. That's gonna be a thing that'll still be going on every every Sunday. I I've been really digging that. Makes it makes it feel like there's a little bit more variety. Just in the here here and there. Whoop. Be doing that, but after that I think we're probably gonna be going back to Lich streaking, I guess, at this point. Unless, unless uh, I don't know, unless there's other major, major different runs that haven't been done. I know there's like little quirky challenge runs and everything like that we could do with Mobby Gungeon, but I feel like that's kind of a separate thing. I feel like uh, we did most of the things that people were really requesting. And the, the one that gets requested probably the most is, is the Rainbow Run, and we're going to keep doing that, so I feel like everything will be all good. All good with that. I'm excited. Excited to get back to the Lich Streak in a way. Like I, I thought I'd be really excited to do new things, and I am. I am. Whoop! Like it was fun to put myself through the through the challenge mode and everything like that that I haven't touched in a long time. But it really makes me realize how much I do love just the basic game. Like the basic game of Gungeon is probably it's just my my favorite aspect of it. That's why I've done a Lich Streak of 300 episodes. You know. And not to take anything away from this run, this run is effectively the same thing, really. It's effectively the same thing with just the, a lot of curse. Whoop. But I've talked about it before, the the curse shrine. I don't know how much I... I, I, I think I like... I, as far as modifiers to runs, aside from uh, rainbow runs, it might be... It might be my favorite. It's probably my favorite. Because... Uh, it does make things harder. It does. It does make it a bit harder, but you do get a lot more money too. Like it makes the enemies definitely harder, but the extra money can kind of balance it out. The biggest thing that I don't like about it, and I've gone on record saying this a handful of times now, I'll say it again. The biggest thing I don't like about high curse runs, starting out with high curse, is that a lot of my favorite items, the ones that I think are the most fun, not even not just the ones that are like really strong, but some of the ones that are the most fun. I find to be cursed. I find the aspect of stealing in the in Gungeon to be quite fun as well. Did I get it? Get it. Get it. Get, get, get. The aspect of stealing, I feel like it's an interesting, uh, I don't know, potentially interesting meta question you can you can have. You're like, do I want to get the curse? Usually, it's a no-brainer. Typically, it's yeah. Typically, it's not a hard question, but still, it, it, it's something to think about. Okay, do we... Yeah, we're doing pretty good damage with this thing. I think it's underrated. It's underrated. I just don't hear people really talking about it. I think it's I think it's because beam weapons get a bad reputation. Understandably so, you know. It's not fun to have to, uh, to charge up and not get the ability to dodge. But it doesn't take that long to charge. And it does good enough damage. And it does a status effect. And it looks cool. Sign me up, baby. Sign me up. Demon head for life. Also, I love our little laser to guide our laser beam. Okay. Light gun is fine. Ooh, light gun with synergy. Hold on. Because of the laser sight. Laser sight synergy there. What did I want to fill? Probably the demon head, I guess, right? Here, I know because people, people get... Uh, <clears throat> physically hurt when I covered up. There you go. You get to see. It's because of the laser side. It's right there. Alright. I'm 
physically in pain because you minimized the, that window too quickly. I'm sorry you're in physical pain. See a doctor, please. You sh it shouldn't be affecting you that way. All right, let's answer some Discord questions because it is uh, Chamber Four. And we haven't gotten to it yet. Oh, we got the, this is a dog one. Hell yeah! All right, after this room. Dog one is quite quite good. Is the flak is not stacking it up faster, is it? It is, isn't it? No. It, it's not. Okay. All right. Uh, Twitch sub milkshake asks, how long do you think it took you to beat the dragon and pass for the first time in hours? Oh. Uh, I. Oh my god. I don't. I don't remember. It's. It was in the series. It was in the original series. It. I, I, like, the, the one thing I know for sure is episode 20 was me, um, playing as the bullet or the robot? The bullet or the robot? Oh, God, I don't even know for sure. I think that episode 20 might be me playing as the bullet. So that would have to mean I had it done for a while. I feel like it only took me to beat the dragon for the first time. Not that long. It really didn't take that long. Uh, under ten, under ten episodes, so under ten hours, I think. Right? I, I, I have no idea, to be honest. Like, you can really just, uh, you can just check the series, just check the series, and uh, and check how many, uh, how many hours I played by. Uh, putting all those episodes together because I didn't play anything off camera I never played it off camera uh, too much so effectively whatever you whatever you see is what you get I don't really play a lot of games off camera right now the only exception for now is I played I dabbled a little bit with some World of Warcraft classic like on, on stream I've been playing a, a gnome a gnome warrior and off off camera I've been playing on a completely different server I've been playing a troll mage just to get kind of different experiences, different vibes. Uh, growing up, I have like way more, way more attachment to uh, la, 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 Alliance because that's just where, you know how it is. Like when you start playing, somebody you know is already playing one of the things, so you just pick one of the things, and that's that. And that's how you get your server. That's how you get your server. That's how you get your uh, your side and your, you know, everything like that. So I was, uh, yeah. I, I originally as a like before. <laughs> I played the demo for it. I know that we're getting into WoW talk here, or whatever. Some people turn on the snooze button, but um, starting out, I was like, I the first character I wanted to make was was a horde character, as I, I think a lot of people did. I think a lot of people really it, people get weirdly weirdly too into their side, you know, like it, it's because the game does this interesting thing. If you're not familiar with World of Warcraft, let me explain some... An, an interesting aspect I find about it is the Horde versus Alliance thing. When you start and you make a character in World of Warcraft, you can pick one of two sides. Uh, you can pick the Horde or you can pick the Alliance. And it's not supposed to be good guys versus bad guys. It is supposed to be... Supposed to be morally gray. Whether or not it truly succeeds at that, I have not been keeping track. But... The thing that they do that's interesting is once you get in game, you cannot communicate with members of the opposing faction. Uh, they, you, if you try to, if you see one of them in the wild and you try to message something out there, you, it just turns it into, you know, it, it literally it translates it into a different language that you will not understand, like into Orcish or or Common or Dwarvish or whatever the hell, you know. It uh, it translates it into something something you won't be able to read, and I think that's. It's an interesting thing, but it also has bred, and I, you know, it's maybe to the game's credit that it was able to do this. It's bred some hostility, like people get really attached to their side because it's easy to not uh, not humanize the other side when you cannot <laughs> cannot understand what they are saying. I mean, we're not gonna go into real world politics or anything like that, but I'm just talking like strictly if you can't communicate with the the horde. 
immediately it's like it's easier to have them be like oh they're the bad guys they're, they're the other side go my side down with your side up with my side but like i don't know there's always the the weird interactions from time and time like uh, every once in a while in uh games like world of warcraft where there's sides like that where somebody kind of defects and you you can like you can wave at them you can dance like just do little special emotes here and there that i find you know i find that to be really fun and interesting makes it really memorable the one moment where like you're trying to take down an a, a, a tough enemy and a you know somebody who's supposed to be your enemy and if you're on a pvp realm could kill you actually just like helps you out helps you take down an enemy you might not have been able to uh to get by yourself because you're you're your enemies but you're also all trying to do the same sort of thing it's fun it's an it's, it's interesting today's kind of like talking about taking a we're talking about game design today i guess aren't we talking about the children of mortar we're talking about ro uh story and roguelikes and talking about um i think we're definitely gonna do some stuff with that selling and talking about you know creating opposite sides in uh, in video games everything like that i don't know I, I, I really enjoy that Gungeon has sort of become become this. Become the, the more podcasty style type thing. And I, I hope a lot of you guys are, are, you know, cool with it as well. We talk about Gungeon too. I'm not like I'm not talking about the game, but we've said a lot of a lot of things about the game already. You know, like when something new comes up for me to say, I'll say it, you know. When I get something something I really gotta think about, I'll say it. You know? Other than that, you know, it's been a thousand fifty hours. Thousand fifty hours. We can we can talk about some other things. Got to keep things fresh that way. That's what I think. Gun knight armor? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, boy. All right. Here we'll talk about gunship for a second here as we figure out how we're gonna. I want gunship to strain, and I also want to do the gun game. We have some things we can get rid of. That might even be enough. 45? It might be enough. Yeah, it is. Call me the temporal horror. Uh-oh. Why is it so slow? Stout bullets? Stout bullets. Stout bullets makes it slow. Forget about it. I always forget about that. I always forget that it's a slight damage down. Or, uh, movement speed down. Bullet speed down. Okay. Uh... Bada bing, bada boom. It's worth it, though. It's, it's fun to have it. It's worth it. Key for sale. There is 38. I'll, I'll sell some stuff to get a key to. I think that it's going to be worth it. It's effectively the closest thing we can do to re-rolling. Without getting, a, you know, getting an obvious re-roll item. I guess we'll get rid of it. We'll get rid of it. I'm just probably not going to use it, so. <laughs> Hold on. We missed a step here. Missed a spot. The judge. Judge is not bad. It's not bad. Not amazing. It's just how good is this? Not very. Beam doesn't make a lot of sense for this phase. Thunderclap actually seems pretty good for this phase, actually though, because you can get the the circle AOE going while you're doing the dodge and everything. This is just so killer, though. Let's get the jammed one. Really want to get the jammed one. Okay. This thing is insane. Demon head or bust. Okay. Thank you. Can we hit on a boss? One, two, three, four. Nope. And there's our other key. What do we get? We could, you know what? We could sell the Winchester. Buy another key. No, we can't buy another key. We could buy the health. 
Do we want to? Does it matter? I'm not. I mean, I'm not going to use Winchester. There's no synergies I could get that would make me want it either. This might even be too expensive, though. 45. 45. Ah. All right. Well, I'm not going to use this either. Not going to use it either. Probably not worth it. But might as well. Hedge our bets, I guess. Hedge our bets. Another Discord question. If you want to ask a question, by the way, link in the description. You can pop on in there. You can talk about some of the things that we talked about today, too. I'd love to hear any kind of thoughts about that. But Grim G3D. Yo, Rita, what is your Gungeon keyboard layout? You know, I've actually been asked this before. I will take a moment. I'll just actually just straight up... Oh, straight up show my, my keybinds for in a moment here. For those who are curious. If you want to play like Rita. Whoop. I'll just straight up show him because I haven't asked before. And I never think about it. I don't remember where the key buttons are. I don't remember where they even are. Oh, stupid. All right. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Right here. Shoot on left click, dodge on right, interact. See, I don't think I changed any of that. I do have reload, reload bound to my side of my mouse button as well, so I can gun drop quickly. And reload quickly. Uh, next gun. Other than that, I think everything else is relatively the same. But it's been so long. So long that I don't even remember if I have changed anything. The big thing is uh, reload on, on mouse 5, which is just a, a button I have on the side of my mouse. That one is like... I, I don't think I'd be able to, to gun drop effectively. Whoop. If I... Or it's not... It's not just, um, hold on. It's not that, it's, uh, hold on. Hold on. What, what, what is it? It's not, it's not reload that, that gun drops though. I just, see, I haven't even thought about it. I'm just like, oh, it's, uh, it's mouse button. Drop gun. Uh, it's its own button. That's right. That's right. And then I have a uh, switch gun on uh, another mouse button, but I never do that. I never use that. I always use control to switch the gun. But yeah, I've got... So, reload... That's what it is. It's got... I got reload and drop gun on the same key on the side of my mouse for ease of... Ease of gun dropping wackiness. Whoop. Can really get a lot of weird stuff done by doing that. And it's just... It's more natural. I feel like... Because I use my... Uh, my left, my, on my left hand, I use my pointer finger to hit the R key. Takes it off of D, so if I'm hitting the R key, you know, I might not be able to move to the right, and maybe I want to move to the right, so I feel like... Having... <laughs> just thinking about moving to the right, baby. Having it off that key makes it so, uh, you know, can keep my fingers on the movement, movement grind at all times. I think it makes sense to have it there. But, I don't know. I'd probably, like, more interesting thing would be how I would probably end up uh, changing my key, key bindings on a controller. Because I bet you I would have a field day with tweaking that. Field day. Anyway, this run's looking like it's shaping up to be a uh, good one in the end here. I think we're going to actually be just fine. Getting that Brocco line. Probably a big boon. Also, not to mention the fact that we got the Gendromeda strain. Obviously, very, very helpful. Very, very helpful. One of the few things that can actually make bosses go faster when you have a really good run. Because of the boss damage cap. Get out of here. Free might. All right. I mean, things could get wild, but truly, we got the chamber gun. I think that bullet hell is going to be easier than this floor even is. So, I think we're all set. We are all freaking set. Just got to ride it out, baby. Unless, I mean, there's some, there's definitely a chance that there's some nasty rooms. On a cursed run like this, you could just, a room where you get hit a couple times by a jammed enemy, you know, all of a sudden. Uh-oh. All of a sudden, I said, all of the, all of a sudden, whoo, you're in a world of hurt. 
you know? We dropped a half health in a in the drop of a hat. Alright. And we're starting to take damage because I started to talk about it. That's just how it goes. At least both times it was not from a jammed enemy. Should probably be using this, honestly. I feel like I still have old thunderclap in my brain. I got old thunderclap in my brain. It used to be bad and now it's like fine. It's definitely better than the gun we're using. Actually scary. Genuinely actually scary. I'm starting to second guess the run now. I'm starting to second guess because... <laughs> of course, as, as soon as I started to be self-aware, that's just how it goes. That's, that's Rito's Law. If you talk about the game too much, you're going to get hit. You have to talk about it just enough. Just enough. You're paying too much attention, then you psych yourself out. You gotta let let yourself go with the flow. Especially when you have as many hours in the game as I do. You don't you don't want your active brain to be taken over. You want you want everything to be autopilot. Because when it's autopilot, you're going with the oh god, what works. At least what's worked in the past, rather. We're getting in some serious trouble now, though. Ring of Chest Friendship is not going to be that great for us right now. We are just not going to get enough keys. We're starting to starting to get close to dying here. Starting to get close to dying for real. Like I mentioned, all of a sudden we're at half health. I mean, we're not literally, but basically. Figuratively. What have I done? What have I done? Hup. Okay, there we go. I don't like this either. This gun is... You know what? This gun's underrated too. It's, it's actually doing a pretty good job. I, I think that... Uh, I think I was sleeping on it. I mean, I know we don't have Thunderclap as an option now, but... It just lasts a long time. It's nice. It's good. Cool hip laid back. The synergy all the time too. Thank you. Super love it. Okay. I mean, I wish that uh, the flak bullets did what you would think they would. I don't know if they do. I don't think they do. Pretty sure they lose all properties. Yikes. Okay. Shots are too big. The shots are too big. Beam them. Beam them. Beam them. Thank you. Fill up all kinds of stuff. Honestly, I'll fill up that. Fill up Thunderclap halfway. That's right, baby. Where's the... Okay. Helix, yep. Armor, yep. I wish we got a key out of all that, but Helix is nice. This is looking good. Look at that. Look at these shots. The thunderclap with Helix is just looks fancy. Looks looks science. Science as hell, dude. All right. We're not gonna get a key, so I guess we should just blow these up now. I guess. I haven't gotten junk in an aha moment. I miss my son, my other son, my son from another month. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Bad. Alright. I think that this plus Helix is going to be a good one. Honestly, Light Gun might be good one too. He jammed. Surprising probably not very many people. You're going to be hit with all these stutter frames because of the darn genies, and that's okay. Well aware. We don't really even need to get closer because we're hitting the boss damage cap. So we don't need to get closer for stout bullets. doesn't really matter. It would only really matter if we're uh, 
not hitting with all of our shots here. Eh. Did I get hit? Did I get hit? I can't tell. Uh-oh. Giant shots. Causing problems. Too close to the back wall. Ah! Okay. This phase is definitely harder to look at with the red shots, harder to process. Just because the contrast is, it's like there is contrast, but there's also the black space as well, making it kind of, I don't know. Are we gonna do it? We are gonna do it, good deal. Gotta love it, gotta love it. All right. Down to the next baby. Answer the Discord question. Kali asks, what happened to your second channel, Rito? It depends what you think is my second channel, because... <laughs> it's funny that I started the episode out with saying I have a second channel. Uh, but it depends with what, which one you think is my second channel. If you're talking about Couch Couple, it's uh, just because I've been really, really busy. Grace has a lot of stuff to do, too. If you're talking about my my vlog channel, I just I don't know I just didn't haven't felt like just haven't felt like doing anything like that so I that's why I haven't really shown it off anywhere. Uh, if you're talking about that extras channel, it's just like from forever ago. It, de it really just depends what you're talking about. I had an extras channel where I would do like little highlight type things. I just felt like it was kind of pointless, so I just thought that it didn't make any sense. So if you talk about all those as my second channel, uh, there's various various reasons for each one. As far as I'm concerned, the only channels right now uh, are mine. Uh, like of, of mine are uh, mine right now, like the one where you watch videos on Couch Couple and the uh, Rito Does Games are effectively the the ones that I I will probably touch again you know will I ever I mean will I ever do like the vlog type stuff on the channel again I, on that other secondary one maybe 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 someday probably not though maybe I don't know I don't know but yeah it totally totally depends on which one's my second channel for now go uh, go subscribe to Rito does games this is my my next call out of it go check it out it's been it's been really fun doing the streams and uh, if you can't make it out to those I mean, because it's obviously it's more fun to be at the streams and actually doing chat interaction. I, because uh, it, if you are not sure if you haven't been to them before, you don't know what what the scope is like. It's a lot of a smaller affair, you know. Like, it's a it's a small small group. If you want to chat with me, you get you literally get to like it's it's a small enough affair. I, my Twitch is not nearly as big as my uh, my YouTube, so you can like you can pop over there. You can follow. Whenever I'm streaming, uh, you know, come in the chat. I'll I'll be there. A very very easy way to actually talk to me. Way easier than trying to comment on YouTube or anything like that. Talking on Twitch is the way to go. It, it's it's my place to it's my place for community interaction. You know, it, is I wish that it could be YouTube, but it's it's hard. There's like so much going on. The Twitch is you know it's it's smaller smaller more personalized. Let's just bust this bad boy open. Smaller, more personalized. We got Junkin. Hey, I was just set talking about you, son. Just in time for the run to be over and for you to be completely inconsequential to it. But I'm happy to carry you to victory, Junkin. Happy to carry you to victory. But yes, Rito does games. Go subscribe. Get it to get it to a thousand. It needs. Not that it really matters, but I uh, can't be monetized until I get oh, blah, 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 a thousand subscribers on it and a bunch of. I mean, a bunch of watch time that'll just come in time not that it really matters that much it's just they're just vods but I, I made it because a lot of people kept asking me to post the full vods on youtube because they can't watch it live on twitch and they and i i the reason i made it is because i agree with this the uh the system on twitch for watching videos s sucks like it's really it's really slow and buffery and it's just 
something about the whole system. I just I can't watch videos on Twitch. I can't do it. It's it's it just sucks to me. Um, so that's why you know made made the place for all the videos on YouTube here. For those of you who like the format a lot better, you can just get them popped up into your subscription feed that way. Read those games. I'll put it in the description. Otherwise, if I forgot, you can, you can just search it or uh, check out my channel. It'll be in the recommended feed. This was a pretty smooth run. Pretty easy, smooth run. I think it would have even been smooth and easy even if we didn't use the... Uh, I want to call this the turbo gun. Because honestly, it looks like... I never thought about that. It looks a lot like the turbo gun. The, um, the chamber gun. This looks so much like the turbo gun now that I think about it. Huh. Wonder if it's one of those ones where they used it as a base. I'm gonna be running out of ammo here, so we want to do some little tap shooting. More ammo efficient that way. Way more ammo efficient. <clears throat> oh. Yoink. Yoink. All right. We're going to have to use something else. Oh, no. Unless. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? I just threw it. Hold on. Excuse me. It's gone. It's gone. Probably some glitch because it's, <laughs> it's a multi-form gun and I tried to throw it. Some weird glitch that way, I guess. But anyway, that is that. That is a dead lich. All, all in all, like all three of these runs could have ended up being <laughs> hilariously, could have ended up being a uh, in the lich streak because we did win all all three of the weird ones here. But anywho, that is that. If I can get you to do one thing out off of this video, go subscribe to Rito Does Games, my second channel where you can catch all of my vods. Like I said, my face cam is in it for, you know, the full the full container of the VODs. Uh, you can follow my whole saga of World of Warcraft Classic. You can follow, you can check out the uh, Dicey Dungeons VOD, Dicey Grand Mole Royale VOD, or even me reacting with Grace, my girlfriend, to the Nintendo Direct. The Sans in Smash, if you will. Uh, <laughs> but that is going to do it for today. Thank you for watching, and an extra special thank you to Ounsu for supporting at the Go Team Gunshin tier on Patreon. You can check that out if you want to be a part of it. Thank you, thank you. See you next time.